For this lesson, we're going to concentrate on how to create a clock inside of your level that displays the time of day time. Say if you wanted to do something like Grand Theft Auto or a similar game, they always have the time of day in your world reflected in a clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to expose how to take the time of day from that value. And then we're going to do some multiplication and subtraction to actually get our minutes along with our hours. So then, in theory, what we're going to do is we're going to print it to the screen. But you would be able to expose that to something like a scale form UI. So then players, when they're inside of your level, they know exactly what time of the day it is. So if it's nighttime, they can kind of expect that the sun would rise. The same in the other side, where they can expect that night is going to fall. So let's get to it. The first thing that I need to do is I need to have a flow graph entity. And in order to do this, we can access our entity section, and it's in default flow graph. I'm going to drag that in. Keep in mind, also, this is the bare bones setup. I'm going to right click and click create flow graph. And we'll call this one world clock underscore FG. I'm going to right click and I'm going to open this up. And I already have my flow graph docked here. It's inside of your tools, and we can go down to flow graph, and that's where you would expose it. So switching over, we're going to exist mostly inside of this graph the whole time. To begin, what we know we need is we need a time of day. And what we're going to do is use a quick search. So I'm going to press the Q key, and I'm going to type in time, time of, and then you'll see that it says time of day. So now that we have this in here, we can realize we can get the time. Now when we do this, we need to make sure that we get the time all the time so that it's rapidly updating inside of our UI. So to do that, I'm going to come over on the side here just so we can switch it up and use different parts. We're going to go to Time, and then Timer. And we're going to drag this in. We're going to leave it at default because this will actually update immediately, quite rapidly. And once we go into the debug mode, which I'm going to unselect, you'll be able to see how many times this actually pushes to the get time input. So now that we have both of those connected, let's uh, check it out inside of our UI. And the last thing that we need to do for that is we need to go to a display debug message. This may only exist in the debug section of your components, but for this case, it's under HUD. It's going to be the same node. It just depends which version you have. Now that we have set this up, we need to stick the current time because we need to trigger to show. And then we also need to stick this into the message. And if I turn on the debug, you'll see that we have immediately, it says 21.66. So coming over here, let's go into our environment editor. And I will dock that over to the side here. So we're not really using it. And if I were to scrub this, you would notice that we get a time of day based on these values. Now this value right here is simply a float and we can tell because it has a decimal point in it. So let's close that up for the moment and go back into flow graph. Disable that and hit the trash can. Now we can get introduced into another node and this one is called the floor. So if we go into quick search and we type in floor, you'll see it's a math node. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to round it down to the bottom. So now if we come in here and we debug, we can see that this value right here has actually, even though above 0.5, gone down to 20.0. And this is exactly what we wanted to do because we can round it out. So let's unselect the debug and think about what we want to do next. So now we want to make some calculations. We have the current time right here. And what we want to do is we want to take the floor here and we want to subtract that from the current time so we can get basically the remainder value. To do that, what we can do is go to the math section. We'll scroll this open and we can go to calculate. And inside of calculate, what we're going to select is subtract. So now that I have this in here, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I pretty much calculate it so in the current time, let's do the calculation. And then next, we want to take the current time and put that in the A slot. And then we're going to take our floor value and stick that in the B slot. 
So now if we were to push this into the message, we'd be able to see that now we're getting the remainder of this value, which is 0.5895. Now, this value, what we can do is we can actually multiply it by 60, and we can get the minutes in the hour. So let's go ahead and disable the debug. We'll trash that. And I'm going to press Control c Control v duplicate. And I'm going to go to my out, and I'm going to stick it in the do calculate, and I'm going to stick it in the A, so we have this value. And then in B, what we're actually going to do is we're going to set this to multiply, and we're going to make it 60. And let's see what the message is now. So we're going to stick that in. And if we debug, we can see that we have 35.37. So now we have 20 up top, and then we have 35.37. Now both of these values are actually a little wrong, and especially the second one. We want to make sure that we have this rounded. So let's go ahead and instead of doing a, another node from Quick Search, what we can go is inside of here, we can do round. So we're going to take this in value, and then we're going to push that out to the message. If I were to debug that, we now have 35. So now we have 20 and 35 as both of our numbers. Keep in mind this is military time, so this would be 835 would be the value. And if I were to scrub open the time of day, you would see that it's over here as well. So it's basically dynamic. So if we look on our screen, we can see that we have 14. And what we need to do is we need to concatenate these numbers in a couple different nodes because we need to add the colon in between. So let's go ahead and remove these. So we know what we want to do. We want to push out this value, and then we want to stick a colon in there. So we can go ahead and do quick search. Let's type in concat, and that's going to bring the string, and we can set that immediately. It's not a big deal. And we can take this string value and put a colon in it. So now we have a colon in there, and what we want to do next is we want to concatenate these values together. So we're going to copy this. We'll do the output there. And what we want to do is remove this colon, because there's no need for it. We can stick this string in one, and we can take the out rounded into the second, and we can push this into the message. Now let's make sure we also push it into the show so we can see it. And now we have 22 colon 14. And in that regard, we're able to change the time. Now there's something that we need to fix on here, and that is actually the value when it slips down below 9. So inside of these, we have 0, which is the whole time, and then we have all the way up to 9. And what I need to do is I need to set a range in here so it sniffs out, or basically tells us that these values are within that. So let's go ahead and change this back. And we're going to do a little manipulation down here. And with this, let's go ahead and remove this. So we'll just do it to the minutes, given the time it takes. So we'll go to Q. And we'll go to In Range. And we'll select Math In Range. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate this twice, because I'm going to check both of the ranges. The first one is going to be 0 to 9. Let me turn off debugging. And the second one's going to be 10 to 59. And our in is going to be our outrounded value. Next one I want to do is I want to go to a logic gate. And I'm going to duplicate that as well because we're going to check both. So we'll set true to open and false to close. And let's go ahead and turn on the debugging so we can see that one is open and one is closed. And it makes sense because this is 27 and this is in that range and this isn't. So it's as simple as that. What we can do is go into our in because we're just basically checking both these logic gates. 
And then what we want to do is concatenate a zero value. So we'll go to Q, concat. And we'll take the output of this. And then we'll go to our out rounded and make sure we stick our zero inside of that because that is the case that we're doing. So let's go ahead and stick a logic any node. So we'll go to Q logic colon any. What I want to do is I want to send the output to here. And then also I want to send this output because either or will fire off depending on what exactly it has to do. So let's move this down a little bit more. We can see that the 6 is still going in there and the output of this is actually waiting for us to input it. So we can see it says 627 inside of this concatenation. So if we go to this right here, scroll this out, if we were to drop, you'll now see that we get 601 within that value. So the clock actually respects the value under 10 to properly show it inside of our graph. So this has just been a quick overview on how to do a world clock. I'll go into other videos where I'll show you how to set up using the same in range, an AM PM signal or symbol coming up. And then we'll also talk about how to convert world clock time to not be so much military time, but respect the 12 hour cycles that we use day to day.